In this video, we're going to consider the Maclaurin series expansion for the exponential function e to the x. And we're going to use this example just to help us consider in more general terms what a Maclaurin series is. And we might as well chat about some of the things we can do with a Maclaurin series. So first of all, what is a Maclaurin series? Well, it's an example of a wider form called a power series. And a power series is an infinite series in which we use ascending powers of the variable, so usually the x term, to represent some function. So in other words, we've got some function f of x, and we take the infinite sum, so let's say n equals uh, 0 to infinity, of some coefficient term, a sub n, and then importantly though, we've got then some power um, ter or term with the, the powers on it, so we can either write that x to the n, or an even more general form would be something like x minus a, uh, to the to the n, but quite often this a value is zero, and then you just get a more simple form x to the n. But the important thing is when you start summing up these terms or expanding these terms, each term is going to have a different power on the x because the n is increasing every time. So you're going to get a, a coefficient term, then you're going to get or a constant term, then you're going to get an x to the one and an x squared and an x cubed term, and that gives you the power series. And that's why it's called a power series. There's two types of power series that we're particularly interested in. Uh, one is called a Taylor series, and then a less uh, general form of a Taylor series, the one that we're going to look at in this video, is called a Maclaurin series. And the thing about a Taylor series and a Maclaurin series, both of which are really closely related, is that they generate these coefficient terms by differentiation. And so these are these have got to be functions that are infinitely differentiable because we're generating each coefficient term in the series by taking a higher and higher order derivative. So first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, you've got to be able to take that derivative in infinitely many times, um, as many times as you want for these series to work. So what do they look like? Well, let's start with the Taylor series. So if we wanted to represent some function by a Taylor series, that's going to look like the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. And then we're going to take the, or the way we're going to consider this is the nth derivative of that function. So we're going to do basically f, um, not dash, but n, okay? So that's the nth derivative. And we're going to evaluate that at the point a. So a Taylor series is centered at a, a Maclaurin series is centered at 0. It's a more specific form of a Taylor series. We're going to divide this by n factorial, and then this is going to be x minus that center point a to the power of n. So you can see that this form is closely related to this form, and really all we've done is we've generated our a sub n term by this weird looking thing here. So it's got this nth derivative, and it's got this factorial. So remember that n factorial just means n multiplied by n minus 1, n minus 2. In other words, you're multiplying to every number less than n. So 4 factorial, I'm sure you're familiar with this already, but 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 7 factorial, 7 times 6 times 5, all the way down to 1. Okay, and then in general terms, n factorial, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to 2 times 1, and then we're done. So that's what the factorial is. This is a Taylor series. Maclaurin series is very similar, it's just that we're going to let the a be 0. So we let a be 0, in other words, we're centering the series at 0, so that's the difference. The center of a Taylor series is at a, the center of a Maclaurin series is 0, and then we get f of x equals a simpler form, which is n equals 0 to infinity. Same thing here, we're still taking the nth derivative, but we're evaluating it at 0, which is generally going to be a lot easier, because you can imagine taking some algebraic expression and subbing in zeros, you're going to get a lot of cancellation and simplification of the terms. And then we still divide that by n factorial to again generate our a sub n term. Because the, the a value is zero, we just end up getting x to the power of n over here. So it's this form here that we want to look at in this video. So this Maclaurin series form. So it's really useful if you're working with Maclaurin series to try and learn the Maclaurin series for some common functions like sine, cosine, the trig functions, e to the x, like we're going to look at in this class, a bunch of stuff like that. If you know these common forms, that could be really, really useful if you're taking a class that requires this material. So how are we going to generate the Maclaurin series for the function e to the x? Well, 
it's good to go about these in a fairly systematic way. So if you think about what is going on here, we're generating our series by infinitely differentiating the function. So we need to take the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and then we need to evaluate each of those at zero. For n equals zero, we're taking the, the sort of zero derivative, which really just means the original function, and evaluating that at zero. So what we're going to kind of do is start to generate almost like a table of values. So we're going to do f of x, and then f prime of x, and then f prime prime of x, um, second derivative, and then the third derivative. And usually we stop after just a few terms. You can carry on forever, but usually we start to see a pattern after just a few terms. So what we're also going to do is to evaluate these at zero, because it's not just that we need to take the derivative, we need to evaluate them at zero. So this at zero derivative, if you like, um, if we evaluate that at zero, that's just going to be f of zero. That's going to be e to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is just one. So that comes out to be just one. This is a very simple Maclaurin series expansion, as you'll see as we continue working through it. If we take the, the first derivative, in other words, a derivative of e to the x, we just get e to the x. So remember that the way that exponential functions differentiate is you take the derivative of the power, park that in front, and then multiply that back to the original function. The derivative of x is just 1, so the derivative is just basically 1 e to the x, which is just e to the x. That's by the chain rule. That's going to mean that because we get e to the x for the first derivative, we're going to get it again for the second derivative, going to get it again for the third derivative, and in fact the nth derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. So that's partly why I've chosen this example. It's a very specific example, but it gives a very neat Maclaurin series. Okay, so that would just carry on indefinitely like that. That's obviously not always going to be the case. If you're working with a different function, in fact this one's quite specific in that, generating the same derivative every time. Usually these are going to be different. Okay, so we need to, again, evaluate each of these derivatives at zero, but we know that we're just putting a, a zero in the same thing every time, so we're just going to get zero um, in, sorry, we're going to get one out of this every single time. So it doesn't matter which uh, order of derivative we're at, we're always going to get uh, one. And again, we could carry on with this um, indefinitely, but we're, we're fine to really stop at this point. So let's start to um, sort of put these terms into the series. So we're generating this um, series, and this is going to be representing the function f of x, which is e to the x. So we start by taking our n equals 0, which is basically this guy here. So I'll maybe just write that to the side. This is for n equals 0, this is for n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. Usually you only need three or four terms to start to hopefully build up a pattern. So what happens here? Well, we're getting this term here, which we know has come out to be just 1, and it's going to be 1 over n factorial. So our n value for this one is 0, so that's over 0 factorial, x to the power of 0. So that can clean up. In fact, quite often we'll take a couple of lines of working for these, because the first time we put in the numbers we get an ugly form and we can clean it up on the next line. But sometimes it's useful to put in that first line, even if you can see that it's going to clean up, just to get the... Um, the sort of numbers in the right place, because ultimately we want to relate these numbers back to n, uh, as you'll see in a moment. So we're just going to park that there for the time being. We're going to add to that the term when n is 1. So we get, again, it's just going to be a 1 on, on the top of all of these. So this term is always going to be 1. That just happens to be the case in this particular function, over 1 factorial. Okay, and then that's going to be x to the power of 1. And we're just going to carry on like that. And you can already start to see the pattern. It's going to be 1 over 2 factorial x squared, and then for this final term, n equals 3, it's going to be 1 over 3 factorial x cubed. Okay? And that carries on indefinitely, okay? So I've only generated the first uh, four terms, but that will carry on forever. So let's start to clean this up. So anything to the power of 0 is 1. 0 factorial, strangely enough, is also 1. So you get 1 over 1 times 1. That's just going to be a, a 1, obviously. Again, 1 factorial is 1, so 1 divided by 1 is 1. x to the power of 1 is really just x, so that just becomes a 1x. 2 factorial, so that's 2 times 1, which is 2. That's going to be 1 over 2, 1 half times x squared. So I'm just going to write that as x squared over 2. And then finally, we've got 
x uh, to the power of 3 over 3 factorial. Now 3 factorial is uh, 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. I'm actually just going to continue to write that with the factorial, 3 factorial. In fact, I'm going to go back to this one and put the factorial back in there as well. I could also put the factorial back here, but I think I'll just leave that off. Because this form, keeping the factorials, so in other words, keeping it as a 3 factorial rather than making it a 6, associates these two numbers together. And remember that we got that from the n number. So what we really want to be able to do with these Maclaurin series, or power series in general, is once we've started to generate the terms, can we come up with a formula, a neat formula or a rule that specifies how to create the series? And it's fairly clear looking at this one that this is the infinite series from n equals uh, 0 to infinity of, well, if I put the 1 back on there, and that was an x to the 0, we've clearly just got, so this is n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, we've got therefore x to the power of n, okay? And we're just dividing that by n factorial. So for the function e to the x, when you create the Maclaurin series and start to generate the terms, it's clear that they've got a pattern to them, and this is the pattern. This is the formula, this is how you generate those terms. So the Maclaurin series for e to the x is just x to the power of n divided by n factorial. So very, very neat power series, really largely because of this derivative coming out to be the same every time, and therefore this coming out to be a one every time. So that's kind of achieved our goal. That is, we've created the Maclaurin series for e to the x, and hopefully that helps you as well understand what a Maclaurin series is. There's a whole bunch of reasons why we might want to work with the Maclaurin series. So in this particular case, e to the x is quite a simple function, but for more complex functions, it can be that if, for example, you want to integrate some function or if you want to differentiate it, then it's easier to do that or more useful to do that in the Maclaurin series form than it is in the native form. So we'll see, we do see examples where rather than just looking at the function and trying to differentiate it from there or integrate it, fitting into one of the rules we know for that, instead, if we consider its expansion, we can integrate or differentiate term by term or even integrate or differentiate inside the sigma notation. And that allows us to make a approach to that problem type when we might not be able to make the approach, uh, the approach any other way. So hopefully that gives you a little insight into what a Maclaurin series is and in general what power series are. Hopefully you can see why that might be useful for representing a function. And this is the specific Maclaurin series for the function e to the x. So I would encourage you to take this form and consider some other functions and see if you can make their Maclaurin series expansions. In particular, try these two functions, f of x equals sine x and f of x equals uh, cos x, and you'll see that they've got quite neat, very neat in fact, uh, Maclaurin series expansions similar to this one. And you can see then there's a connection between these uh, three functions. And actually it's that connection between those functions that leads to um, a well-known result in mathematics called uh, Euler's identity, which um, says that e to the power of um, i pi uh, plus 1 equals 0. So if you've seen this before and you were always curious as to where that came from, it actually comes from the Maclaurin series expansions for these. So give that a go and uh, see what you make of it. If you've got any questions about this material here or any comments, then just leave them in the comments box below.